This is Twit. So Chrome 72, which we were talking about a second ago, that's the just released stable channel version, um, is evolving. And I thought that some of the changes they've made are interesting uh, that in, because they involve deprecations and removals of things. So, for example, um, pages made as of Chrome 72, the current Chrome, uh, for me, I had to go into like help about and then that kind of gave it a little kick in the butt uh, and it updated me from 71 to 72 and then I you know, do a relaunch and there you are. Um, pages, and this was a good thing, may no longer use the window.open to open a new page during a page unload. Thank goodness. You know, and of course we know that there are misbehaving sites where you know you you click you, you leave a page and it springs up another page to say, wait a minute. You know, it's like, you know, like, you know, bad sites do that. So they've just decided, OK, uh, the, the Chrome pop up blocker already prohibited this, but it's now prohibited whether or not the pop up blocker is enabled. So, you know, yay for a usability improvement, because, you know, if you're leaving somewhere, you're closing a page. It's like, just let me go. I, I I don't want to, you know, one last, please don't go or whatever nonsense. Also, uh, in this 72, HTTP based public key pinning, which is different than HSTS, that's header based public key pinning. This is that, um, well, okay, that it, that's, that's, um, um, uh, I'm getting myself confused here. I don't want to confuse people. Uh, HTT based public key pinning is HPKP, which was intended to allow websites to hand to, to send an HTTP header that pins one or more of the public keys present in the site's certificate chain. But nobody ever felt comfortable with that because um, what that would mean would be that if you failed to anticipate an upcoming certificate change, you would have been proactively saying only trust this certificate that we're sending you. If you and we did talk about this at the time, I remember you. So what what using that meant was you would have to be absolutely sure that you were replacing your certificate with a new one. Uh, and then the problem would be, what if someone hadn't visited your site for a long time and only had the, the uh, a certificate that had then expired, they'd be, you'd be providing them with a newer updated certificate, which your earlier certificate and page delivery had said not to trust. So the point of this is because this was never really very well thought through, it never achieved much adoption. So in there, I mean, this is one of the benefits of the kind of telemetry that, that Chrome um, is obtaining from its users is it's able, you know, they're able to look at this and go, uh, you know, this only ever got, like not quite two percent, which actually is the number that I remember seeing about this. So it, it, we're gonna just get rid of it because no one's using it, no one is gonna use it, and it just you know this was something we can get rid of. So it's gone in seventy two. And notice that this was something that that who, who, where the removal of it was it wasn't anything that anyone depended upon it was a belt and suspenders sort of thing so okay we're going to just trust the suspenders uh and we'll go we'll go beltless um and there are better solutions for doing this too also we've talked about the um the the fact that over the long term ftp is finally going to disappear from our web browsers i mean back in the day with Netscape Navigator, you, you did sometimes. It was sort of convenient that you could use your web browser to show you the contents of an FTP server and click on links and navigate around. Um, 
it turns out that up until now, you could a, a web page could use an FTP link to like render an image. You could have an image tag that wasn't HTTPS colon slash slash. It was FTP. And I, I, I was like, what? Who, who would use an FTP link to render images on a page? But apparently, Bob, well, maybe nobody. But the point was the feature has always been in our browsers until now. So um, um, Chrome is beginning the process we, that we discussed recently of deprecating FTP. Um, you'll still be able to use it to browse a directory and, and, and click on links to download things manually, but the, the browser page will no longer use FTP to pull its own content like images and so forth. So, uh, <laughs> you know, if that breaks anybody's page, well, okay, you know, it's time to move your content well, first of all, it's non-secured. It's non-securable. There is F S. There is SFTP and FTPS, which are secure versions. But that's not what we're talking about here. So, it's just in general, it's going away. And you know, fine. I, I'm all for something like this that is this old and is uh, not being really used in our current ecosystem to be removed. And speaking of deprecation. TLS 1.0 and 1.1 uh, are not long for the world. 1.0 is even older than this podcast, believe it or not, Leo. Uh, nearly 20 years old. Nothing's older uh, than this podcast. <laughs> and and uh, because 1.0 and 1.1 can make use of MD5, okay, and SHA1, both which are no longer considered sufficiently strong, um, th um, th it's really time to retire these. They also are both able to use RC4 and uh, CBC ciphers. Um, well, CBC being, being an encryption mode. Uh, the As we know, RC4, I loved it for its simplicity and that it was as strong as it was but it suffered from implementation weaknesses because it's pseudo random key it's pseudo random stream generator needed more warm up time than it was being given in practice so people said okay we don't we don't trust this just because uh, and the cbc is you know cipher blockchaining its construction is is flawed uh, and it, it w which made it vulnerable to some attack. So anyway, the point is there there were modes of 1.0 and 1.1 TLS that were just getting old and considered vulnerable and time to move away. So they are further deprecated uh, in Chrome 72. And I, I looked trying to figure out like what exactly that meant in this case. I mean, we know in the case of, as I was just saying, FTP pages would no longer render FTP provided assets. Um, maybe it shows something on the URL bar. That's like, you know, stop, <laughs> stop doing this. I don't know because it's not actually being killed completely until Chrome 81, which is due about a year from now in early 2020. So, you know, they're doing the right thing. They're giving people time to move away. So presumably, if you go to a 1.0 or 1.1 site under Chrome 72, something will happen. I don't know what. If, like, apparently it still works. Maybe you, it slaps you or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody, one of our listeners, will find a server. Uh, e even GRC is at, is at TLS 1.2 now. So you, ca you can't test it with me. Uh, it'd be interesting to know what happens with this deprecation of 1.0 and 1.1. Um, presumably, it's something that the user sees that causes them to be worried that then puts pressure on the site to update their servers uh, in the next year sometime. So good. Um, and it, 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 part of this was Chrome's deprecation policy that I thought was interesting. They said, to keep the platform healthy, we sometimes remove APIs from the web platform which have run their course. 
uh, and they said there can be many reasons why we would remove an API, such as they are superseded by newer APIs, they are updated to reflect changes to specifications to bring alignment and consistency with other browsers, they are early experiments that never came to fruition in other browsers and thus can increase the burden of support for web developers. They said some of these changes will have an effect on a very small number of sites. To mitigate issues ahead of time, we try to give developers advance notice so that they can make the required changes to keep their sites running. Cur Chrome currently has a process for deprecations and removals of APIs, essentially announcing on the Blink-dev mailing list, set warnings, and give time scales in the Chrome Dev Tools console. Ooh, I bet that's where the TLS 1.0 and 1.1 deprecation stuff shows. It probably is a Dev console warning uh, when usage is detected on the page, and then wait, monitor, and then remove the feature as usage drops. So, bravo. Uh, you know, I'm glad that the number one browser in the industry is, you know, making these moves and essentially creating uh, some coverage for, for other browsers that want to follow along and, and also keep things clean.